Shabbat Shalom. This week's uh, parsha, Parshat Emor, we have continued the 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 list of of laws pertaining particularly to the priest to the Kohanim, that is the central theme of of a Sefer Vayikra, and one set of laws there is seems again so totally strange to us, so totally not part of our universe uh, that I thought I would say something about it, at least trying to give it some explanations to what, what, what's going on there and what's the rationale. Talking about the laws, about the defects, the physical defects that disqualify priests from serving in the temple, in the Beit HaMikdash. There's a list of physical defects, some of which are easier to understand. For instance, if the person is blind, then of course we wouldn't want him to try and slaughter an animal or, or you know, offer incense. Uh, but other than other other such as disproportionate limbs, or certain uh, discoloration in the eye, or uh, disfigured nose, uh, don't make much sense to our sensibilities, to our ethics. It doesn't seem right that someone who was you know born with a certain uh, defect or what seems to be a defect or what seems to be an abnormality should not be allowed to exercise the the duties and privileges of the Kohanim. So what's going on here? So once again, the path-breaking, a really revolutionary, unexpected explanation comes from Maimonides. Maimonides, who has a ideological principle that all of the laws of the Torah are rational. They have a rationale that can be understood, but they have to be understood and in this in in the context of the Torah being laws that are given to humans that are designed for humans. The Torah was not given to angels, it was given to humans, and the Torah uh plays upon, it takes advantage of, uh, exploits human tendencies to get us to act in the direction, the moral direction the spiritual direction that the Torah wants. And Maimonides classifies really all the laws appertaining to the temple, particularly the construction of a magnificent building, uh, the production of these you know, gold and, and silver vessels, the extraordinarily beautiful garments that the priests re- uh, wear, and the physical, aesthetic demands of the appearance of the, of the priests all uh, joined together for the same purpose, which is to inspire awe in the people who come to the temple. Going to the temple is not an everyday occurrence of people. It's something that most people would do at most three times a year during the festivals, and probably not that often. And so it's not something that we 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 get used to and, and sort of become blasé about. And the visit to the temple should be a, an awe-inspiring experience. And what inspires awe, what inspires a sense of being standing before something that is really uh, super magnificent, is the physical experience, is the aesthetic nature of the human being. And this is, this is the, 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 the direction that the Rambam, the Maimonides, takes in explaining these laws. Now, Maimonides' suggestion was taken up and taken a bit uh, further, elucidated a bit by Sefer Chinuch, a book whose authorship is, I think, still in dispute, written several centuries after Maimonides' time, uh, which goes through the 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 uh, paracops, the parashot of the of the uh, Torah, and describes uh, the commandments the 613 commandments as they appear in these parashiot, and he has a section on each commandment, again, for its rationale. And he takes a, the, this, the, understands these the rationale behind the laws disqualifying a priests who are not physically uh, beautiful, as, uh, or at least, you know, physically whole, uh, as, 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 again, being something that appeals to the aesthetic uh sense of humans. He says that, that people as a rule judge the efficacy 
of the actions of someone that they're, who's acting on their behalf by the physical appearance of that person. When we, that we ask the priest is there on our behalf, we cannot actually sacrifice the animal on our own. The priest has to do it for us. And having the priest be someone who is physically whole with no uh, you know, a blatant uh, disfiguration or, or, uh, or, 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 or a dissymmetry in their body uh, inspires us, us into thinking that he's doing a good job and that his work will be efficacious. Now, this is important because we are supposed to, when, the, when we are bringing, say, a guilt offering, a korban chatat, and this offering is an important part in our uh, in our penitence, in in, in, in in our relieving ourselves of the of the burden of these sins. A lot of it depends on our identifying wholly with the action of the priest who is making the sacrifice. And if this priest has some very glaring physical disfiguration, that just won't happen. So that's really the only reason. For 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 these lists of, of disqualifications, or many people, or some people have suggested that you know there's some sort of spiritual dimension to to these rules. But the Sefer Chinuch points out, I think, very astutely that the, the according to the halacha, according to the Jewish law, if the priest has an internal def, uh, uh, this not defect, but say the person is missing a kidney. Or has had his gallbladder removed. That priest, uh, his 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 service is acceptable because it's not something that you see. It's what the eye meets, what the eye sees, which triggers in us the uh, the, the, the 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 proper response, which will lead to the proper spiritual response on our part and identifying with the with the sacrifice and making the needed spiritual adjustments on our own part. Now the Rav, Zechot Tzadik Levracha, Rabbi Salavechik, had something to say in a, a similar vein with regard to the, the prayers on Yom Kippur, the day of, of repentance. He says, asks, why in, in, in these prayers do we constantly refer to sin as something filthy, dirty, disgusting, revolting? I mean, it's, it's a violation of the law. It's, it's not, you know, I mean, you know, in English we speak of a dirty thief, but we know that there are plenty of thieves who are, you know, dressing really uh, fine, a nice, clean a suit and tie, and and uh, showered and and with expensive cologne. But the the why do we call uh, our sins something filthy, revolting, disgusting, unbearable? Because the aesthetic sense is much more stronger in the human than the rational sense. If you try tell someone, well. You know, with that little business that you made was uh, not quite the kosher. It was a little shady, uh, and it violated all these rules. Well, they'll think of some answer, some way of saying, "Well, no, there's a, you know, I didn't really do it that way," and it's and, and people have, have so on and so forth. But so that's not the way to spur people to repent. But if you get people to think that the sins are making them disgusting, so filthy and disgusting that when you know, like sometimes when you come back when in some sort of uh, exercise or work that you got really uh, dirty, just can't wait to get home and, and, and take a shower and get rid of this dirt, that's the way we should feel about sin. Because it's it's the aesthetic sense that is much more powerful, immediate, and spontaneous in humans. So to sum up, I don't want to imply that aesthesis, this you know sensory stimulus, is is a central feature of Judaism. I think the Rav and others would say that's, you know, one of the differences between Athens and Jerusalem. That's more of a Greek value. We are are developing our spiritual and intellectual aspects because God being a totally abstract being, having no, uh, not, no not material in any way, cannot interact with senses senses to detect only sensor, uh, sensible physical objects. So the way to get close to God is to develop our spiritual or intellectual aspect, and I won't go into the difference between the two of them right now, but to stimulate us, to spur us, 
to take the proper direction, it is nothing more powerful sometimes than the aesthetic side, the, insp- the, 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 the perception of beauty, or alternatively the perception of filth, perception of, of filth to get us to get rid of our sins, which make us filthy, and the perception of beauty, which make us want to draw closer to the God who uh, designed this very and created this very beautiful universe. So that's a few words on the aesthetics of Torah and how it relates to our pastor. Thank you very much, and Shabbat Shalom.